How many eggs did you get? Four. Awesome. Good afternoon, ladies. Are you ready to get moved? I think they can see what I have over here. I know. Your shepherd has grain, huh? There it is. Yeah, we're expecting a little bit of snow possibly tonight, so we're going to move them one more time today. And we figured that we'd uh, make a quick video just showing the quickest way that we've found to set up a new paddock for these guys. I'll give you guys some grain when once you get moved. How about that? Betty's ready. She knows there's treats involved. I'm set this down, and then I'm going to go start moving the fence. When? All right, taking down the fence from the last paddock. It's pretty easy, especially compared to the poultry fencing. Yeah, you just want to keep it nice and organized. Because once the posts get all messed up in your hand, it's kind of hard to hang on to them. See, and they already know what's up. They know what time it is. Yeah, they're usually pretty cooperative. Every once in a while there's an issue though. If they get spooked for some reason, you might have a problem trying to get them to move. It takes quite a bit to convince them there's nothing wrong. But if you're smart, you can always keep a little bit of grain in your pocket and that'll get the last few. <laughs> so for somebody that's just getting started using this kind of fence, what we like to do is I'll drop my first two posts um, next to the, one of the corners in the direction that we're moving. And then I'll end up dropping either four or five posts on the first straight side. And as I move this way, I'm counting to see how many I did on the last fence, and it's usually four. So I'll usually do three or four across. And then I just bring it back in this way. My last drop of post is two. I usually drop two posts at the beginning and two posts at the end. And then I leave a space open in the middle so that we can just go ahead and lift up that middle post, let the sheep come through, and then grab the two last posts that I'm not going to put up right away, and we can close the gate up, and I'll show you all that. So, because we have not mowed over here, um, there is a little bit of a challenge with, uh, with setting up the fence in the long grass. A lot of people will come and mow a strip or they'll weed whack underneath the fence. And you can do that, it definitely would help. Um, but you can also just kind of kick the grass out from underneath of it. And then just step your fence down and you get pretty much the same effect you do get a draw on your charger from the grass touching it but we found that it's still plenty enough to shock the sheep and uh, it still keeps the predators out from what we found hopefully we don't find otherwise but that's usually what we do in the long grass for right now getting our sunset here some real pretty sunsets here Now I have my opening here, it's about 
about two posts across. This is the old fans keeping them in. I can just open this up, let them in. Come on, girls. Good job, good job. Good girl. I can grab my my last post over here. Bring it to the middle. And then I got my last post over here. Pick the grass off from underneath, make sure that the bottom of the fence is seated on the ground. And then the last thing I got to do is just move the charger over from the last fence over to the new fence. Bring in their water. And because they got nice fresh ground in here, I know there's no poop over here yet from them because they've, they've never been on this spot before. I can go ahead and sprinkle some grain out there for them as a nice treat before we get some snow possibly. Get some green, Betty. There you go. <laughs> All right. That's pretty much it. Last step for us is just to uh, make sure that the chargers turn back on. Classic. Thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching You and Me Ranch. Please hit the sub subscribe button and the like button. And leave us a comment. Thank you.